Welcome to this predicted paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMaths site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. So with this question, we need to first of all count how many sides this polygon has. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's 10 sides. And we just need to know that a 10-sided shape is a decagon. Now we are expected to know all of the names of shapes between three and ten sides. So if you don't know them already, just sit down and learn them. All angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. So we've got this angle here, which is 25 degrees, and we've got this angle here, which is currently unknown. So to find out what A is, we're going to take away that 25 from 360. And when you do that, you get 335 degrees, which is our answer. You'll often need to write down the reason, which is angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. Here we're given a, or asked for a cube root of a number. So what we need to do is we need to understand, first of all, what the cube root of 125 is. Well, I know that 5 to the power of 3, 5 cubed is 125, and that's something you need to know off by heart. Therefore, the cube root of 125 is like the opposite, it's the inverse. So the cube root is the inverse of cubing, so that's going to equal 5. So if the cube root of 125 is 5, what's the cube root of minus 125? Well, I know the cube root of 125 is 5 because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. 5 times itself 3 times is 125. So what times itself 3 times is going to equal uh, minus 125? Where well, it's going to be minus 5 times minus 5, which would be positive 25, times minus 5 will be a negative minus 125. So our answer is going to be minus 5. So we're going to start off by writing the sequence out. And what you might notice straight away is that each of the terms is increased by 2. And so we're asked to find the next two terms. So we're just going to keep this pattern going. So increase it by 2. That would be 20. Increase by 2 again. And that would be 22. Medium means middle of an ordered list. Now, when numbers are put in a stem leaf diagram, it means by default they are in order. So we're going to cross out the smallest and largest number. So the smallest number is the 4 here. Well, actually that represents 34. The largest is this 69 up here. Put a pen away. Then cross out the smallest. Well, the next smallest is 39. And the next largest is this 59. So I'm always going to the top left, then the bottom right. So the top left number is this 43, bottom right number is this 54. Top left number is this 44, bottom right number is this 53. Now, here's a problem. We're left with two numbers in the middle, this 49 and this 52. So whenever we're left with two numbers, what we do is we add them together, divide by two. So to find the median, we're going to do 49 plus 52, and we're going to divide that by 2. So 49, oh, 49 plus 52 is going to be 101, divided by 2. And 101 divided by 2 is 50.5, or 50.5. And, and again, realize that 50.5 is halfway between 49 and 52. Here we have a triangle, and we've got an angle of 48 degrees. We've got this right angle, which is 90 degrees, and we're looking for x. So what we need to do is we need to realize that 
the three angles will add up to 180 because it's a triangle. So what we're going to do to find x is just subtract the two angles which we know. So we're going to subtract the 90 degrees plus the 48 degrees from 180. And in brackets we're just going to say the reason and its angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So when we do that, we do 180, take away 90 plus 48, and you get 42 degrees. So to solve this, I'm going to first of all just write out the question, just to make it a bit bigger. First thing we do is put in our solving lines. So we just put a set of lines to the left and the right of the equals. And what we need to do is get the x on its own. So looking around, there's this 11 we want to get rid of, and this takeaway 5 we want to get rid of. Always get rid of the plus or the takeaway first, so we're going to focus on this minus 5. We've got to figure out what is the opposite, what's the inverse of takeaway 5. Well, the inverse is going to be plus 5. Now we can't just do that to the left hand side, we've got to do it to the right hand side as well. So we add 5 to both sides. When we add 5 to the left hand side, we're just left with the 11x. On the right hand side we do 28 plus 5 which is 33. Now we still don't have x on its own, we've got this 11 here. Now what is that 11 doing? Well that 11 is a times 11, it's multiplying x by 11. So to get rid of it we need to do the inverse of times 11, the opposite, which is divided by 11. And what we do to one side we must do to the other side. So we're going to divide 11 both sides. That will leave us just the x on the left hand side and 33 divided by 11 is 3. So the word solve means find out what x equals and we've done that. To find a coordinate what we can do is we can start in the middle and we work out how far across we have to go and here we have to go 2 across so the x coordinate is 2 then we find out how far upwards or downwards we have to go. And here we can go, well, we have to go three downwards. So that's going to be minus three. So we first of all look at the x coordinate, the two, then the y coordinate, minus three, along the corridor, up, or in this case, down the stairs. To be able to add or subtract fractions, we must make the denominators the same. So what we do is we write out the 5 and 7 times tables, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and you keep going through each times table until you get to a number that's the same in both. You can see it's 35 here. So we go times top and bottom by something to make the denominator 35. So for this first one it's going to be 7, so we go times top and bottom by 7, the second one is going to be 5. So 2 times 7 is 14, and then the bottom will be 35, the denominator. And then 2 times 5 is 10, and the denominator will be 35. Then when we have that, we take away the numerators. So 14 take away 10 is 4, and that just leaves 4 over 35. So we can see whether we can cancel it, and we can't. So the answer is just 4 over 35. If we were to write this decimal in the columns... And some of you might not have used these columns in a while, but we have units here, we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, that's all we need. So it's going to be 0 0.182. And if you read off the number, it's 182 thousandths. So you just look at where the last digit is, and look at what column it is, and reading the digits from left to right, you can put that number, 182, over that last column, 1,000. Okay, so it's 182 over 1,000, but they're both even numbers, so we can actually cancel it down. It says it wants it in its simplest form. So we can divide Tom Bomb by 2. And 182, well, 180 divided by 2 is 90, so that's going to be 91. Now, I'm not sure, I don't think you can cancel that anymore, so I'm going to put that as my answer, 91 over 500. 
So with a stem and leaf diagram, the numbers in the middle often represent tens. They could be units. Um, so we look at the key first of all, and we see that three line nine means 93. So the numbers in the middle are going to represent tens. So this is a 90. Now we're looking for English, so this will be 92. So our first number will be 92. Then this will be 10 tens and a four. So it'd be 104. 11 tens and one, so 111, and then 11 tens and two. So to find the median, we go cross out the biggest and smallest until we're left with one or two in the middle. Here we're left with two. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the 104 to the 111, and we're just gonna divide that by two. So when we do that, we get 107 and a half or 0.5. So our answer is 107.5. The difficulty with finding the perimeter of this shape is we do have some of the lengths missing. So we're going to find the lengths that are missing first, and then we'll find the perimeter. So the one on the right here is going to be the same as the one on the left. So this is going to be 5.6. Same with the one on the left of the 2.4. So this will be 2.4 here. This length here is going to be slightly more tricky to work out. What we do is we work out the total length across, or the total width across, which is 9.8, and we take away the bits that we know. So we take away these purple lengths at the bottom. So to work out the um, length of the missing bit, we're gonna do 9.8, and we're gonna take away the 4.3 plus the 1.2. And then when we do that, we do 9.8, take away those bits, we get 4.3. So this missing bit here is 4.3. So to work out the perimeter, we're going to start at the top left of the shape and add up all the lengths as we go around the shape. So 9.8 plus 5.6 plus 1.2 plus 2.4 plus 4.3 plus 2.4 plus 4.3 plus 5.6. When you add all those up together, you get 35.6. It's a perimeter, which is a distance, so our units are centimeters. I'm going to first of all work out how many parts there are in total. So we've got James with nine parts, six for Andy, and seven for Tia. So in total, we've got nine plus six plus seven, which is 22 parts in total. And we're asked to find a fraction Tia receives. Now, Tia is the last one, so she is receiving the seven parts. So it's seven out of 22. So a stem leaf diagram is just a way of showing raw data. And uh, This one here could either mean 10 or it could mean one. In this case, we're using it to represent a one. Because if you look at the data, they're all either one point something, two point something, three point something, or four point something. So looking at the one point somethings, we've got a 1.1 there. And we've got a 1.4. Looking at the two points, we've got a 2.1, a 2.3, 2.4, and 2.8. Looking at the threes, we've got 3.8. And looking at fours, we've got 4.2, 4.4, and 4.7. And so in our key here, we're just going to pick this number here. It doesn't actually matter which number we pick. And we say one line one means 1.1 centimeters. All probabilities have to add up to one. And so the probability it will rain tomorrow is 0.15. And so the probability it won't rain is 1 minus 0 0.15, which will be 0 0.85. So this question is asking us really to divide the um, 5 and 3 quarters by 1 and 3 quarters. So we're going to do 5 and 3 quarters divided by 1 and 3 quarters, because we're finding out how many of each of these towels, which is 1 and 3 quarter meter, um, can be made when the total amount of cotton is five and three quarters. 
So um, first thing we're going to do is convert them to mixed numbers, or sorry, to top heavy or improper fractions, because at the moment they're mixed numbers and we can't divide or times um, if they're mixed. So we times the 5 by the 4 and add it to the top, which will be 20, and then add it to the top 23. And then do the same, 1 times 4 is 4, plus it to the top is 7 over 4. Now a little um, trick here is KFC. We keep the first uh, fraction, we flip the second fraction, and we change the um, divide sign to a time sign. So we're going to keep this first fraction as it is, change that divide to a times, and flip the second fraction. Okay, whenever we multiply, we just multiply the tops, so 23 times 4, which is 92, and we times the bottoms, which will be 28. And now we need to convert this back into a mixed number. Um, so first of all, actually, we can simplify this, because uh, we can divide um, top and bottom by 4, uh, so that would be 23 over 7 and then make this a mixed number. So 7s into 23 go 3 whole ones, and then obviously 2 remainders, so it's 2 over 7. Now it asks us for the amount of towels that she can sew patterns into. Now the issue here is that she will do 3 whole towels, but then have some left over, but she can't, she doesn't have enough to create a fourth towel, so it's just going to be 3 as an answer. To find the pressure, we need the area and the force. And we're given the force in the question, and so all we need to do is find out what the area is, which will be the 7 times the 9, which will be 63 centimetres squared. And the um, force is given to us in the question, so what we can do is write down the pressure formula, which says that pressure equals the force divided by the area. Force is given to us as 2268. The area we've calculated is 63. Divide the 2 and you get 36. So it's going to be 36 newtons per centimetre squared. So we're told that from 14 people who liked football, so we've got 14 people here who said yes they do like football, so we can fill up the 14 here. Now, we're told we started with 31. Therefore, if 14 liked football, then 17 must have not liked it. Carrying on the sentence, it says 4 like rugby. So 4 of those liked rugby. And we had 14 to start off with um, down this strand. And so that must mean that we've got 10 who don't like rugby. So of those 14, 4 liked rugby. So therefore 10 must have not liked rugby. But what about the bottom section? This part here. We've got 17 who didn't like football. Well, it says from the people who did not like football, 6 liked rugby. So we've got 6 there. And that must mean that we've got 11 who did not like rugby. So here we're asked to factorise a quadratic, and our answer will be x plus or minus something, x plus or minus something. So it'll be two sets of brackets with an x at the start. Okay, so to be able to find out what's in the bracket, we look at the 36 there, and we know that we're going to have to multiply two numbers together to make that 36. And we look at the coefficient of the x, that 15, and we know we're going to have to add these numbers together to make that 15. Now, if you just can figure out in your head the answer, that's absolutely fine. If not, you can just quickly write down the factors of 36. Now, because they um, multiply together to make a positive 36, they'll either both be positive or both be negative, but they add together to make a positive number. So we're just looking at the positive factors. So 1 and 36, uh, 2 and 18, uh, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. And we're looking for which ones of those add together to make 15. And we can see here it's going to be 3 and 12 add together to make 15. So our two numbers are going to be plus 3 and plus 12, or the other way around. When proving two triangles are congruent, and congruent means exactly the same, 
uh, we're going to have one of four answers. Either side angle side is the same, angle angle side, or angle side angle. Side 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 are the same, or they have the same right angle, hypotenuse, and side. This question doesn't have a right angle, so we can cross that out. It has two lengths, uh, so two sides, but not three, so we can cross that one out. Um, it only has one angle, so we can cross this one out. So we're looking to see whether it has the same side, then angle, then side. So here we've got 13 as a side, then 139 as an angle, then 6 as a side. 13 as a side, 139 as an angle, and then 6 as a side. So they have the side, angle, side. Integer just means whole number, so we're looking for all the whole numbers that satisfy these two inequalities. Well, the first inequality says that it has to be greater than 3. So the smallest number that is greater than 3 is 4. The second uh, inequality says it has to be less than or equal to 8. So I'm just going to keep going until I get to a number that is less than or equal to 8. It can't be 9 because 9 is not less than or equal to 8. So our answer is 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we're asked to rotate the triangle A 90 degrees clockwise and the centre of rotation at 0, 0. So we're going to first of all just show where the centre of rotation is, which is at our origin. And what you do is you get tracing paper, trace out the triangle, and rest your um, pen or pencil at 0, 0. So I'm just going to draw it out. So I just copy it out. And what you do is you would push your pen into zero zero. And unfortunately, I can't do that. But when you when you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, the shape will end up here. And so we just got to line this up perfectly. A little bit less rotation, maybe. There we go. And then what you do is you'd lift your tracing paper and just draw in the shape underneath. And it says to label in the triangle as B. So our triangle says that speed um, equals distance over time, and average speed is the total distance over the total time. So when we're looking for average speed, we want to work out, so we're just going to write average speed or speed, and it's going to be the total distance. So the distance starts at zero, goes up to 30. So the total distance is 30, and the time starts at 10.15 and ends at 11. So that'll be 45 minutes or, well, we should do it in hours, um, because the units we want in hours. So it would be 0 0.75. So 30 divided by 3 quarters would be 40. So it's going to be 40 kilometers per hour. The rules of indices say that when we multiply two numbers of the same base, and the base are the big numbers, then we add the powers. So we're just going to do that to the top fraction here. So it's going to be 5 to the power 13 plus 4, which is 17. And then that's going to be over 5 to the power of 5. Now, what a fraction is basically is a division. So it's 5 to the power of 17 divided by 5 to the power of 5. And the rules of indices say that when you've got two numbers of the same base, which we do here, and we divide them, we take away the powers. So we're going to do 17 take away 5, which is 12. When we estimate, we normally round to one significant figure. So, what I'm going to do is just rewrite this question, but rounding everything to one significant figure. But I'm just going to miss out this square root for now. So, 3.3 .3 would just be 3, and 4.7 would just be 5. Now, the problem with this 27 is square rooting 27 is difficult, especially without a calculator, and estimating should be done without a calculator. Um, but if I round it to the nearest significant figure, if I round it to one significant figure, that will make it 30. Now 30 is no easier to work out 
So square numbers are a bit of an exception. When you've when you've got sorry square root, it's a bit of an exception. You've got to find it uh, to the nearest square number. So twenty seven to the nearest square number is twenty five. So square root of twenty five is five, and then five take away three is two times five is going to be ten. So our answer is ten. To find the gradient, we need to find two points we know on this graph. So I'm going to pick that coordinate and this coordinate here. And we know that we need to draw a right angle triangle between them. And we find the gradient by the change in y, which is 3, over the change in x. But notice the change in x is 1, so it's going to end up being 3 divided by 1, which is just 3. So a different definition of the gradient is for every 1 we go to the right, how far up we go, which is 3. When you multiply powers with the same base, you add the powers. So we're going to do that here. We're going to add the 13 and the 4 at the top of this fraction. 13 plus 4 is 17, so it's going to be 5 to the power of 17. We haven't done anything with the 5 to the power of 5 at the bottom yet. When you divide powers of the same base, you subtract the powers. So we're going to do 17 take away 5, so it's going to be 5 to the power of 12. So we're asked to find the vector 3a plus 2b. So we're going to start off by working out 3a. And so we're just going to times the top and bottom of a by 3. So that'd be 9 and 6. And to find 2b, we do exactly the same to the second one, but we're going to times it by 2. It'd be minus 2 and minus 4. And so to find 3a plus 2b, we're just going to add the um, tops together, so 9 plus minus 2, and add the bottoms together, so 6 plus minus 4. 9 plus minus 2 is 9 take away 2, which is 7. And 9 plus minus 4 is going to be 2. So the vector is going to be 7 and 2. So the first thing we notice is the coefficients of the x's and the coefficients of the y's are different. But if we look at the y's, they are very similar. So we've got 3y and we've got 6y. So all we need to do is times everything in the top equation by 2 and then they'll be matching. So we're going to write out the first equation again. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything in it by 2. And so I'm going to write that equation again, just so we can match up the equations nicely to be able to do our simultaneous equations. And I'm going to write the second equation just as it is, because it's already 6y. And get my bubbles in, because obviously we're working downwards. Now we're either going to be adding or subtracting these, and the way of telling is looking at the sign before the 6y's, the matching coefficient, and if they're the same, and we subtract. If they are different, then we add. Now these are both the same, they're both positives, so we are going to be subtracting. So we're going to subtract the top ones from the bottom ones. 10x take away 6x is going to be 4x. 6y take away 6y is nothing, which is good. So if we're left with any y's here, that means we've made a mistake. And 70 take away 54 is 16. And let's get our lines in, because we need to solve this last bit by dividing 4 both sides. And so we've got x equal to 4. Now that's only half the job, because we need to find out what y is. So what I'm going to do is just copy this first equation, but substitute in the value of x, which is 4. So 5 times 4 plus 3y equals 35. Get my lines in. And 5 times 4 is 20, so I'm going to take away 20 both sides to get rid of the 20. So we've got 3y equals 15. And then we're going to divide by 3 both sides. So we've got y equals uh, 5. Now we can substitute in the values into the second equation. So four, uh, 6 times 4 plus 6 times 5 it does equal 54. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site, 
On Maths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.